This video was sponsored by Squarespace. Lightning. There's one thing I know to be abundantly true as a lover of tech for many, many years. Competition fuels innovation, and innovation often leads to breakthroughs. Evidently, this is where we find ourselves today with the introduction of the first ever HDMI 2.1 sync box, the Light Me Fantasy 3 TV backlight, a small device representing a momentous leap forward since the introduction of the 2.1 standard back in 2017. For this video, we'll do a deep dive on the Light Me Fantasy 3 TV backlight. We'll cover off on the specs, the setup, features, limitations, live demonstrations, and we'll even draw some comparisons against the new Gobi AI Gaming Sync Box that I recently reviewed. We're also going to be testing our performance from a technical standpoint, using various demanding next-gen titles across PS5 and the Xbox Series X. <laughs> The Light Me Fantasy 3 sync box features a total of five HDMI ports, four in and one out, which is awesome. And each port is equipped with 2.1 tech, capable of supporting bandwidths of up to 48 megabytes per second, which is great for gamers and streamers alike. As for the backlight itself, it features 72 LEDs per meter and is not cuttable or extendable. However, much of that is offset by the fact that Light Me is offering the following four unique strip lengths. The Fantasy 3 sync box is also HDCP compatible, and I've tested it with pretty much all of the major streaming film and TV show apps, and I haven't had a single issue. Netflix, Prime Video, Disney+, HBO Max, Hulu, and Vudu. Dolby Vision and HDR are also supported for the Light Me Fantasy 3 as well, but there is a bit of a caveat on that front, which we'll discuss during the features. The kit ships inside of a compact box with a nice color scheme and artwork, and you'll see an indicator on the side of the box for your specific backlight length. Pre-orders on the site are planned to begin shipping sometime around April 24th, and we should see the Fantasy 3 go up on Amazon sometime in late May. But until then, it sounds like Site Direct is the only option to pick it up. At a glance, here's what's included inside. We have the user manual, which is short and sweet and gets to the point. The 10 corner mounting clips, which are ingeniously transparent so that regardless of their placement, they won't block any of the light beads a single high quality HDMI 2.1 cable, the four section light strip, again 72 beads per meter, and it's attached to an extremely long USB-C cable that will in most cases eliminate the need for an extension. And lastly, the HDMI sync box itself, which is incredibly compact. I did not expect the five port sync box to be this tiny, but I love the small footprint in design. It has a rectangular shape with hexagon like corners and an abstract pattern on the very top. Because dimensions are so small, the USB-C backlight port is actually engineered on the side of the unit rather than on the back, which means that the light strip cable will stick out a little bit, which isn't the cleanest look. But if you're going to be placing the sync box inside a cabinet, that won't be an issue at all. There's also a micro USB port on the side as well, which you can pretty much ignore. That port was actually planned to be used to power the device via the TV but apparently there were some compatibility issues, so the AC port on the very back will provide all power needs for the unit. I needed to move some cables around behind my TV, so I actually took it down before installing the LightMe backlight, which definitely isn't necessary. The instructions recommend installing each of the four sections about 0.4 inches inward from the edge of the display, so I installed the strip on the inside of my pre-existing Gobi T2 backlight. You can see I got much better coverage with the LightMe 65 to 75 inch length versus the T2, which is designed for 55 to 65 TVs. I definitely have to give LightMe props for providing more length options to choose from. Being that these backlights are not intended to be cut, you're really at the mercy of the ranges that are offered. I think LightMe also made the right call to go with a much longer USB-C cable. This allowed me to feed the wire down through a raceway and into my cabinet without any third-party hacks. As you can see, I also have all four of my video source devices directing down into that cabinet as well. Port 1 PS5, Port 2 Xbox Series X, Port 3 Nintendo Switch, and Port 4 PC, where I dock my Steam Deck and Aya Neo devices. Once the backlight is installed and all devices are connected to the sync box, you can do one of two things. You can download the dedicated Light Me Home app directly, or you can download the Smart Life app which actually houses the complete Light Me Home interface within it. 
If you want to be able to use voice to control the device, you're going to require the Smart Life app no matter what. So I'd say that this app is more useful overall. Now the most important thing when calibrating the backlight to match the colors on screen is to make sure the side setting is correct. The app will show you three separate colors around the strip. Just make sure everything lines up to what you see in real time. Also make sure to activate the TV synchronization. When toggled on, it allows the backlight to turn on and off with the TV, which is an amazing underrated feature. When it comes to the Light Me app features, you'll have the ability to switch in between ports and you'll have the option to toggle in between video, music, and scene mode. For video, you'll first notice that there are three primary sync presets, a video, recreation, and a game mode. Now I reached out to Light Me for better clarification on how they intend users to utilize these toggles. And they say that you can think of the three presets as low, medium, and high reaction levels, where video mode functions as low, recreation medium, and game high. Additionally, for each of these three presets, there's a diffusion slider tool. This allows you to adjust the color sync intensity. The more you move the slider to the right, the more acute the reaction will be. LightMe recommends roughly 60% degree of diffusion for a balanced experience, but I actually like around 40 to 50%. Take for example this scene in Bright Memory. You can see how the backlight is reacting to the ripple of the water. Bring that slider all the way to the left and the lights become virtually static. On the flip side, bring that slider all the way to the right and the lights go crazy. I found that level of reaction to be a bit much for me for most scenarios, but the feature is there and to each their own. Now another key highlight for the Fantasy 3 backlight is its ability to shut off beads entirely in black areas. I think this does add an extra layer of immersion in some cases, such as watching dark scary movies, but I would have liked to see an option to have the dark areas represented with a low dim white if desired. Because in addition to a heightened sense of immersion, I rely on backlights to reduce eye strain and fatigue that can come with staring at a bright display panel for long stretches of time. So if you're watching a film with frequent dark and bright scenes, having the bead shut off and on, off and on, can potentially negate the health benefits of bias lighting in general. Again, I really like this feature. I just like to be able to customize it for various different scenarios. Now let's get into some of the more technical elements of the sync box itself. Each of the four HDMI 2.1 ports does indeed yield a 120 Hz refresh rate at a 4K resolution, and I love this. But there are some compromises that you need to be aware of if you are considering this kit. I'll start with the PS5. First off, the LightMe Sync Box does technically support HDR and Dolby Vision. Now the PS5 doesn't support Dolby Vision, but it does support HDR, and that is where my first problem arose. You see, when HDR is active on PS5, the color representation of red is suddenly thrown completely off. The backlight stops matching red with red, and instead opts for this light orange's color. I thought there was a problem with my unit at first, but it turns out that shutting off HDR in the PS5 settings immediately corrects this. But that is such a bummer because HDR looks so incredible on the PS5 with an OLED display. Now the interesting thing is that Dolby Vision, the HDR equivalent for the Series X, doesn't have this problem whatsoever. Dolby Vision performs just as intended in game and for videos and color representation remains on point. The second compromise for both the PS5 and the Series X is that there is no VRR support currently. So you're going to be able to hit 120 at 4K, but it's not going to fluctuate on the fly for a smoother experience as it would when VRR is active. Because of these limitations, I actually picked up an HDMI 2.1 splitter for cases when I want to take advantage of VRR, ALLM, and HDR for the PS5. I have one cable routed down to the sync box and the other routed up to an HDMI port directly on the TV. And from there, I can toggle in between these two cables as needed. Drawbacks aside, graphics look great, performance is snappy, and my devices don't appear to be hindered in any way by funneling the signal through the sync box. And the more reactive capabilities of this backlight create such an amazing sense of movement when web slinging at high speeds in the Spider-Man games or ripping up the streets in Cyberpunk 2077. I feel a heightened level of immersion that I've never experienced with any other TV backlight, and it's both exhilarating and a little bittersweet given what I've had to relinquish in order to experience it. Whatever your passion is, whatever your expertise may be, be it a service, product, etc., Squarespace can provide you with the tools to build a professional and legible website or domain that is both reflective of your brand 
and geared towards helping you achieve your goals, be it monetary or otherwise. You do not need to have an ounce of experience with coding or graphics design or anything of the like because Squarespace has some of the best in class customizable website templates, housing beautiful imagery and artwork to help you build a clean and professional online presence. Head over to Squarespace today to discover how simple it truly is to build a website or domain from the ground up. Mm. The Fantasy 3 sync box is only a third generation product, and yet they've managed to engineer it with HDMI 2.1 tech before any other major brand in the smart lighting category. And that alone is to be commended and celebrated because this is a huge step in the right direction for next generation gamers as we push forward towards 2024. The Fantasy 3 is a quality and powerful HDMI sync box with an incomprehensible small form factor. And it is supported by a relatively new but evolving application that has a generous amount of customizable levers. And the TV synchronization feature is very well executed, allowing for powering on and off the backlight in line with the TV itself. However, the modern technological perks that one must give up in order to take advantage of the 2.1 box are quite bountiful in its current state. Absent VRR support, CEC, ARC, ALLM, and the HDR compromise for PS5 that I covered off on in the features. Compounded together, these factors make a 2.1 splitter setup feel almost necessary for true hardcore next-gen gamers. Additionally, while we're getting into the drawbacks, I'd also like to see more granular control added to the software to allow for adjusting things like saturation, which I find to be a bit on the low end as compared to the Govi AI box. Manual customization for features such as setting specific colors for icy areas of the backlight would also be much appreciated because as it stands now, the software supporting the Govi AI box is just leaps and bounds ahead. In the future, I also hope to see more streamlined integration with the voice assistants without having to sideload a second app in order to link Alexa via a skill. And lastly, as with any HDMI sync box, I have to point out that smart TV apps are not supported and require the use of a dedicated streaming box. All gripes and nitpicks aside, I've been legitimately enjoying my time with the Light Me Sync Box over the last few weeks, and I cannot wait to see what Light Me does next from both a software and hardware standpoint. I know that they're currently working on building out a small ecosystem where separately sold light bars and light strips, for example, can be synced with the light box, which sounds very promising. Before you jet, let me know what you think about the all new Light Me Fantasy 3 HDMI 2.1 Sync Box. If you have any specific follow ups, make sure to drop them down below. As always, thanks for watching and supporting the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one.